This is the Renault Megane E-Tech. It's a quirky EV and I really like it. Why? Keep watching. The electric Megane is shorter than the Megane 4 and even shorter than the Megane 3. It has a longer wheelbase, it's taller, but narrower. Strange, but then it's an EV on a new platform. The front is smooth and round and the air intake is masked in the lower part of the bumper. Gold elements on the corners under the funky daytime running lights lead into actual air ducts, which have aerodynamic benefits. After all, EVs have to be efficient in every way. From the side you'll notice black cladding around the wheel arches, along with the sills and the bottom part of the door. These are supposed to make the car look less chunky, I guess. There is an 11 cm thick battery in the floor. And the silver line from the A pillar kinking around the C pillar makes the roof seem suspended over the car. In the rear I lined the 3D lamps and a light strip across the boot lid. A lot of black with some gold accents on the bottom to mask the battery. It looks interesting and the Megane turns heads. Many people have no idea what they're looking at. But the Megane was always interesting. In the Megane 4 review a few years ago, I even said it's probably the best looking compact hatchback you'll see in the showrooms that year. First things first, how do I get in? Well, if I have the key with me, the door handles just pop out. But what if I don't have the key on me or if I disable the hands-free operation. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Fortunately, the rear door handles are concealed in the C pillars, which may fool some into thinking this is a coupe. Anyway, Renault doesn't care much about passengers in the back, but more about that later. Inside, we are greeted with a sound and a graphics display. Nothing strange if it was played when I press the start button. Instead, it is played when I open the door or when the passenger opens the door. Fortunately, this can be turned off. Another quirk is the seat memory function, not your regular button on the door or on the seat affair. Instead, there is a prompt on the screen and I know it works. I just don't know how for sure. The sitting position is low, like in a traditional car, because of the batteries in the floor, obviously. The driver gets a wide display with several viewing options, including a map. And uh, you can sort of change your most important settings or computer readouts, uh, like your range and the day trip meter with the button on the right side on the of the wheel and on the left side are the cruise control buttons. In the middle is the large infotainment screen. This is where I tell you the Megane E-Tech runs Android Automotive. I've experienced this already uh, in the electric Volvo XC40 Recharge. The system can be synced with your Google account, should be actually, so in theory you don't have to use Android Auto. Unfortunately, Android Automotive is far from what I would consider to be uh, ready for prime time, let's say. For example, Google's native podcasts app in Android Automotive looks like early IRC chat room stream. Forget about manual refresh or playing the podcast from where you left off on your mobile device. So you have to start Android Auto, but when you set Android Auto Satna, for example, you lose the map on the driver's display. You also lose charging network information. I'm not sure how the system works in Western Europe, but in Poland, Google Automotive shows only one charging network, unfortunately. Basic climate control functions are still set with physical buttons, for which the designers should receive medals, monuments and special pension bonuses. I also like this little detail. This bit of plastic under the screen has a bit rougher anti-slip texture so I can rest my fingers on it. Why? So that my hand doesn't move about when I'm pressing something on the screen. The interior is dark. Neither the ambient lighting nor the pixelated faux wood make it look any brighter. However, 
in the top spec there is a light interior upholstery option. I strongly recommend it. The wireless charger under the central screen is big enough for large smartphones in protective cases. I don't know about your phone, but mine is so slippery it slides off the table just from looking at it. So I need a protective case. Sounds familiar? Drop me a comment. Below the charger is a large storage cubby and two cup holders. One of them is so deep under the center console, the driver should not be using it. The armrest slides to reveal a coin cubby and two USB-C ports. Storage under the armrest is average size and so is the glove box. I know it's broken, that's how I got it. Door pockets accommodate large bottles. And one more thing before we set off. The drive selector is one of three stocks here behind on the right side of the steering wheel. There's the media stock, the wiper stock and then the drive selector. Convince me this is a good idea. Drop me a comment below. It's worth clarifying the Megane E-Tech can mean the fourth generation plug-in hybrid or the fifth generation EV. The electric Megane E-Tech comes in EV40 or EV60 variants, which is exactly what you think. The battery size expressed in kilowatt hours. The electric motor power output is 130 or 218 horsepower respectively and the range is up to 300 or up to 450 kilometers respectively. This is the more powerful EV60. Renault claims this car will use around 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, divide 60 by 16 and you get 375 kilom kilometers, which is 75 less than the claimed range. On the motorway with the cruise control set to 120 kilometers per hour, the Megane E-Tech uses 18-19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, so realistic range can drop to about 300 kilometers. However, around the city, I managed to get below 12 kilowatt hours, which means a theoretical range of more than 500 kilometers. Helping achieve this range is uh, four-stage recuperation, which you can set using paddles on the steering wheel. As it is the case with EVs, a lot depends on the road conditions, driving style and weather. I was on an 850 km road trip with this car and half of the way it was raining heavily. The temperature dropped from 20 degrees to 13 degrees Celsius. I used wipers, the mister, phones were charging 18 to 19 kilowatt hours. In the winter I expect it to be even more, though the optional heat pump may help lesser the cold weather impact. Speaking of the weather, Renault Megane E-Tech has automatic headlights, which work not only in the dark but also when it rains. In Poland you have to turn your headlights on when there is poor visibility and that includes rain. Some automatic headlights don't turn on with the wipers and many people drive around only with their daytime running lights. Now, I'd probably get a better result if I used Eco Mode all the time. However, Eco Mode limits the top speed to 100 km per hour. Yes, you can overcome it with pushing the accelerator harder, but that's just to overtake and then the car quickly slows down back to 100. To select the drive mode, you have to press a button on the steering wheel. I'd rather have a turning switch so I don't have to toggle through various modes and take my eyes off the road. I used adaptive cruise control during most of my trip, it works well, and so does the active lane keeping assist. I usually complain about the state of charging infrastructure in Poland, but this time chargers were conveniently placed and mostly unoccupied. And they mostly worked. The Megane E-Tech can take up to 130 kilowatts, but the peak seems to be rather at a low state of charge, which this graph from the French Largus car website confirms. Depending on the spec, the Megane E-Tech can be had with a 7 or 22 kilowatt onboard charger. Watch out for the charging port on the right front fender. It's great when you charge curbside, less so if you have a tight garage and you park front first. 
My trip was 425 kilometers one way. On the first leg of the journey, I charged only once and then used a Type 2 charger at the hotel. On the way back, I charged twice, just enough to grab a bite to eat and take a quick toilet break. Since I was in the mountains, it would probably be wiser to start my return trip with the battery discharged slightly to take advantage of downhill recuperation, but that's just me optimizing because of Poland's sparse charging infrastructure. For exact cost breakdown, you'd have to use your local energy and charging prices. I did a road trip in the BMW iX from Poland into the Alps, and you can watch this for an exact breakdown of costs. Link on the screen and in the description below. The Megane E-Tech road trip across Poland cost me about 5 euro 70 cents per 100 kilometers. This takes into account charging the car at home before the trip, charging at the hotel and three fast charging stops along the way. For reference, at the time of filming, regular petrol and diesel prices in Germany were just above 2 euro per liter, so this means a car would have to use about 3 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers to be as economical as an EV. This of course doesn't take into account the charging time and the availability of the charging infrastructure. However, if you put all these little things in place, you have electromobility and it's easy and it's cheap. Renault claims the Megane E-Tech EV60 accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in 7.4 seconds and this is exactly what I got, both in Eco and Sport mode. But like other EVs, also the Megane E-Tech is quick mainly in a straight line, faster corners are not for the faint-hearted as the car can understeer heavily. Some car makers try to cheat physics with all-wheel drive, more than 1600 kg is a lot for a compact hatchback. Otherwise, the Megane E-Tech road trip, as well as driving around town, was a pleasant experience for me and for my passenger who was sitting in the front. Maneuvering around the city is easy with the 10.4 meter turning circle, also the 360 camera helps you get your bearings. I like that the automatic parking brake stays on even after you restart the car. If I were to complain about something, it would be the rear visibility, which is limited by the falling roofline and the extra camera mounted right in the middle of the rear window. This camera is for the virtual mirror, which should solve the poor visibility problem, but in my opinion, it doesn't help much, as my eyes cannot accommodate quick enough between the 3D view in front and 2D view on the screen so close to my face. And what about the rear passengers? Well, I don't think... Renault planned any. There is very little legroom, headroom and even the space for feet under the front seats is scarce. There is no armrest, no cup holders, even the door pockets are very narrow, but there are two USB-C ports and some air vents. The boot has 390 liters and some more storage for cables under the floor. There is no frunk, which would be useful when you're on a road trip and you want to bring a Type 2 charging cable not all hotels have them. But that's not a big deal. I think a bigger deal is the water dropping into the boot from the wet tailgate, just like in the Megane 4. And like in the Megane 4, also here the boot sill is too high and there is a hump when you fold the seats. This car could really use a double floor. At least there are shopping bag hooks. Oh, and which beautiful mind made the tailgate opening too narrow for the parcel shelf? When you close the tailgate, you first hear the shelf hitting the stoppers. Bravo! Prices of the Renault Megane E-Tag start at €35,200 for the Equilibre EV40, add six and a half grand for the EV60. This test car is the iconic EV60 for around €50,000 minus any local incentives. My week with the Renault Megane E-Tech was surprisingly pleasant. I drove it for more than 1000 kilometers and I really enjoyed it. Unless winter weather seriously impacts the battery performance, I'd seriously consider one. And how do you like the Renault Megane E-Tech? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, Join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.